All right, welcome to part two of the series of lessons where we build our get it done to-do list app that will um, introduce us to a lot of concepts in, uh, involved with using databases within web applications, and in particular, using MySQL databases within Flask applications. All right, so that's what we're going to do in the second lesson. We're going to handle some of the setup needed in order to integrate databases within our Python applications. So the first thing I want to do before I go ahead and start working with some of the Python specific stuff is to just go ahead and set up a database and a database user for this application to use. So to do that, I'm going to fire up MAMP. So go ahead and uh, follow along by starting up MAMP and start your servers if your MAMP server doesn't automatically start on its own when you open the application. Okay, and uh, I'm gonna go from the start page, I'm going to go to tools and PHP my admin, which we've been working with. And again, if you uh, didn't get that web page automatically loaded for you, you can click on the open web start from the MAMP um, main screen. And this will log us into PHP my admin, which is just a user interface for interacting with MySQL databases, and in particular, the MySQL database that is installed as part of MAMP. Okay, so here we want to create a new user and database that we can use within our application. And so the best practice um, that we like to follow for this is to have for each database, um, well, for each application, there should be one database, and for each database, there should be one user. This allows you to make sure that you're separating um, privileges and, and permissions properly across your various applications. So uh, a great way to do this within phpMyAdmin is to just go to the user accounts tab and go to add user account. And here, we'll go ahead and just set this up. And I like to name my database user after the application. And so it has the exact same name. So I'm going to call this get it done. And I'm going to restrict the connection to localhost. We're only going to be working with this database on our own machines. And then the password, um, you can make this whatever you want. It's not that important that a development database have a very secure password. If you're working with a production database, we have to be very concerned with um, the, the security of such passwords. But for uh, for development database, it's a little bit less important as long as that database is only accessible and only used on your local machines. So I'm going to set up this database password. Um, you can't see it, but I just typed be productive, all lowercase and no spaces. Um, as the as the password, and then the one thing that I want to do as I do this that will um, is a nice handy uh, 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 step is to check this box that says create database with same privileges or with the same name rather and grant all privileges. So what this does is when I create this user, PHP my admin will go ahead and create a database with the exact same name and give this user all privileges on that database which is a step that we would have had to do, do manually otherwise, and we would have wanted to do those exact same things. This is just a nice shortcut to do that. So check that box and then scroll all the way down to the bottom right and click on Go. Okay, so now we have uh, a database, a user, and um, the proper permissions for that database and user setup to work within our application. So I'm gonna leave this tab open. I'm gonna close the web start page, but leave this, this phpMyAdmin tab open and pull it all over to the left so it's nice and handy. And now I'm going to come back and come back to my terminal. And so before we go ahead and start working with the Flask application, we need to install some additional packages that will allow our application to connect to a database. So there are different databases and different um, sort of drivers and things that, are, uh, that can be used to connect to various databases. And so we need to install some database-specific and application-specific packages in order to create a bridge between Flask and our MySQL database. Okay, so um, two of these we're going to use. Um, we're going to use this package called SQL Alchemy. And this is, a, as the title says, a Python SQL toolkit and object relational mapper. That term object relational mapping is one we're going to talk about again and again. Um, and it is sort of the, the term that is used to describe the process of taking objects from an application, say our Python objects, and translating those into relational data that lives in a database like MySQL. Okay, so we're going to use SQL Alchemy, but we're actually going to pull it in via a package called Flask SQL Alchemy, which is a module that uh, enables some Flask-specific settings and behaviors um, that are wrapped around the SQL Alchemy package. So we're going to use this one in particular to, um, to, to bind our application to the database. So let's go ahead and go back to our terminal and let's install Flask SQL Alchemy. So the command to do this, make sure that you're in your virtual environment 
because you install these, these packages within the virtual environment. So make sure that's been activated. If not, go ahead and take a second now and activate the Flask Env. And once you've activated it, you can run the following command to install Flask SQL Alchemy. Okay, so that's conda install, which is the command to install a package into the virtual environment that's currently active using conda. The dash c conda forge, what that does is it says we want to install a package that is not part of the default package repository that conda provides, but it's part of a different package repository that's named conda forge. So we need to specify that um, Flask SQL Alchemy will live here so that the installer knows where to find it. And then we finally provide the name Flask SQL Alchemy. This, this is just the same line, by the way, because I've got my font blown up so you can see it. Yours will likely display all across one line. You don't want to break, break a line here after the dash. Um, go ahead and do that and hit Enter. And I already have that installed. You'll see the, the, the confirmation message that asks if you want to install Flask SQL Alchemy. And when you do do that, you will see that it installs uh, about a few other things as well. So if you do conda list within an environment, that'll show you the packages that are installed for that environment. And in particular, Flask SQL Alchemy was installed. We also see down below that SQL Alchemy was installed as a dependency of that. And there were uh, a couple other things that were likely installed for you as well. But those are the two main packages that are at play here when we're connecting Flask to a, to a MySQL database, okay? And then there's one more package I need to install. Um, so let's conda install py mysql. That's P-Y-M-Y-S-Q-L. And that is a specific driver for Python applications to connect to MySQL databases. And we'll use this specific driver in order to make that connection for us. So go ahead and do that. And once again, mine is going to tell me that it's already installed, but you'll see that confirmation message, which you can just select yes to and let it go ahead and finish the installation process. Okay, so now that those packages are installed in our virtual environments, let's go ahead and bounce back over to our application and set up our application to use them. Okay, so I need to first import the correct uh, modules. So let me come up here to the top and make a new line before my uh, from Flask imports. And let me do a from Flask underscore SQL Alchemy import. And this is kind of a weird one to type, but you have SQL Alchemy with SQL capitalized and then the A capitalized. Okay, so that will import the SQL Alchemy uh, uh, the SQL Alchemy class from the Flask SQL Alchemy um, module. Okay, now uh, we need to configure and set some configuration settings for our application that tell it exactly how to connect to our database. So below our first app config line, let's make another one, app.config. And here the setting that I want to config is in all caps, SQL Alchemy database URI separated by underscores. Okay, so this will be the connection string that is used to connect to our database. And so it's gonna contain uh, some of the information that we just set up by creating the database and user um, via PHP my admin. So the connection string for us here will be within quotes. It starts off by saying the type of database we're connecting to. And then after that, I put plus pi mysql. That says I'm gonna to connect to a mysql database using this pi mysql driver, then I can say colon slash slash. Um, then I provide the uh, the username and password that are part of uh, going to be used to connect to this database. So the user was get it done. Then I do colon and the password, which I said was be productive. And I say at to specify the location of that database. Which server does it live on? In this case, it's going to live on my own computer, so it's at localhost. So I get, once again, I have database user colon database password name at localhost. Um, I also need to put the port number that I'm going to use to connect there, 8889. And just a note on the port number, uh, you this is, this is the, the default MySQL port number set up by MAMP. There's a chance that yours might have changed, either because you explicitly changed it, or sometimes, depending on the different MAMP install installers that are around, you might get a different port number set up. To confirm which port number you actually have set up, you can go to the MAMP window, click on Preferences, 
and then click on the ports tab. And this will tell you what your MySQL port is, okay? So this is very important. This is one of the areas where you can really get tripped up and have your application where you think it's all set up properly and you can't connect to the database because you have the wrong port. So um, just, just be sure to double check that port. Okay, and then after the port name, I tell it the name of the database that I want it to connect to. So in this case, the database name is the same as my username, get it done. So I just put slash database name right there. So a lot of information in this connection string. Uh, SQL Alchemy uh, will know exactly what to do with each piece of this information, and will use all these things to create an actual connection to the database within our Python application. So uh, one of, again, you know, there's, there's a lot of places that things can go wrong when hooking an application up to a database, and the connection string is, is probably culprit number one or maybe culprit number two behind, the, behind not having your database actually running. Uh, so if you, are, if you encounter issues when doing this, when in a moment when we try to start our application up and use the database, come back and just double check this connection string. That's the, one of the first things you should check to make sure that you have all of the things in place. Um, you know, some of the most common things to, to, to mess up are the port number, uh, the user and password, uh, and then the database name. Okay. And then there's one more config setting I want to set up here. Let's say app.config. And then this setting is called SQL Alchemy underscore echo. And this is a really great one. I want to set that to true. This is a really great setting for, for two things. One is just kind of um, learning about object relational mapping and how Flask applications or just applications in general connect to databases. And it's also useful for then debugging later issues that you might have when your, your application isn't talking to the database in the way that you expect it to. So this will essentially, in the terminal when our application is running, this will provide, it will echo a lot of the SQL commands that are actually getting generated by SQL Alchemy. And we'll see what those look like um, in just a moment. Okay, and then to actually uh, tie this all together, now I need to create a new variable called db, and I'll set that equal to Uh, the result of creating a new SQL Alchemy object. This is calling the SQL Alchemy constructor, and I pass in my Flask application in order to um, to properly uh, bind those two things together. And this will create a database object that I can now use within my application to interface with the database via Python code. Okay, so we're almost ready to go to go test this out. All right, we're almost ready to go test this out. The first thing I need to do, though, before I can actually test this, is have some data that I can put in my database. And the way we will set up data that can be stored in the database is creating a persistent class in our Python applications. So we're going to create a class that represents the object or, or um, sorry, application-specific data that we want to store in our database. So here we've been storing our tasks within just a list, right? Just strings within a list, which is not, not a great way to organize our data um, in general. So let's go ahead and create a class to represent tasks within our application so that we can then um, set up and actually put some data in the database. So to create a persistent class or a class that can be stored in the database, we um, just use the normal class syntax. So let me say class task. But then I need to specify that my, my class extends the db.model class. Okay, so here db is the object that we created above, and that object has a class inside of it called model. So this is going to represent, um, by extension, by extending this class, my, my task class will inherit some basic functionality that allows my task objects to be translated to a relational setting by SQL Alchemy. Okay, and so uh, the basic things that we need to do within this class um, are twofold. One is when we, uh, just at the top of the class, we basically need to specify the data fields that should go into columns within this specific class. So uh, there are two things that um, we're going to put in here. The first is an ID. Every class that we create that is persistent, in other words, every class we create that is to be stored in a database, will have an ID, and that will function as the primary key. You learned about primary keys in some previous lessons and how primary keys uniquely identify rows within a given table, we're going to have to manually configure our primary keys um, for the data that's associated with our task objects. So the way to do that is to say id equals db.column. In other words, 
the data that is associated with the ID field of my task class will go into a database column. And then within this column constructor, what I need to do is tell it the data type and some other information about that, about that, uh, that database column. In particular, I'm going to tell this column that it should be configured to be an integer. So the ID we're going to store will be a numeric ID that will be unique to every given task. And then I also need to say that this class, or sorry, um, uh, this, this uh, field will represent the primary key for this class and uh, for, for the, the um, database table that's associated with tasks. So I do that by saying primary key equals true in this column constructor. Okay, and so that's all we need to do to basically give each of our objects, our, each of our task objects, a unique integer. We'll see that when we create task objects, we don't have to configure this integer and we don't have to worry about storing the database. That'll be handled by SQL Alchemy for us. The one thing I will handle manually is uh, the name field. So the name is going to represent the name of the task that is created. So this will again be a column within the table that represents tasks. But this is going to be a different data type. It's going to be a string data type. And so with string data types, we need to set the maximum length of the given string that we want to store. Let's go ahead and say that the maximum length of our task names will be 120. And this is, this is the data that's replacing the functionality of this tasks list. We were storing the name of the tasks within a list. Now we're going to store them as the name property of the task, uh, various task objects. Okay. And um, that's it. That's it. So the next thing we need to do just to finalize this class construction is to provide a constructor. Our constructor should take the one uh, unique thing or the one user specified uh, piece of data for this class, which is name, and just set self.name equals name. Okay. And that's, that's really all we need to do here. So now we have a persistent class that's configured to have its objects stored in the database in the given columns configured in this way. And pretty much SQL Alchemy will handle the rest as long as we've configured this properly. Okay, so now we're ready to just go and try this out a little bit. We've, we've done basically the minimal amount of code that we can create in order to test out this, this database configuration. Um, and we're not actually going to do it within this Python file. We're going to do it in a slightly interesting and slightly different way, which is to uh, connect to the database via, via the Python shell. And in order to do that, I need to do one little thing before I leave this file, which is to go down to the bottom, and I need to shield this app.run call with an if name equals main. And we've seen this in a few places in the class. And recall that basically this shields any code within this conditional so that it's only run when I run the main.py file directly. If I want to import objects or classes from this file into other, uh, other, other applications, other files, etc., I can do so and prevent the application from starting up in those cases where I don't actually want it to start up. So this will still let the application start up properly when I do a Python main.py from the terminal. But as we'll do in a second, if I want to import my, um, cla my task class um, or any of these other objects, into another Python session or another Python file, I can do that without starting up a full-blown Flask application. Okay, so save that, and then let's come back to the terminal and try it out. Okay, so here once again, I'm at my terminal at the root of my project, and I'm um, in my Flask env. I have my virtual environment activated, and then I just want to run Python to start up a Python shell. Okay, so here we're just going to interact with the Python shell to connect to the database, create the database tables, and put some basic data in the tables that um, will be application-oriented data, okay? Uh, to do that, we should import the, some of the objects and classes that we need from our application. So let's say from main import db comma task. This will import the database object, which we, um, which we set up to be a connection to our application database right here, right? And it will also import the task class. And so once we have those two things imported, we'll be able to create tasks and store them in the database. Okay, and you'll get this warning method message. Basically, uh, we can just ignore it for now. It's not, it's not super important for what we're doing. Um, it's, it's, you know, don't let it scare you, just ignore it. Okay, so now we have a database object right there. We can just see DB. And we can see that if I just print that out, you know, you can print out uh, things from the Python shell by just typing their name and hitting enter. You don't have to do an explicit print. 
Um, but this says that the DB is a SQL Alchemy object, and the engine is basically this uh, this thing that we configured as the database con um, database connection string. It's got a little bit of extra stuff in it. Notice it's masked to the password, and it has this uh, other parameter, which is the default character set, um, just set up there. So um, that DB object is the legit DB object from our main.py file. Okay, so the next command we're going to do is db.create underscore all. What this does is it uh, scans the, the, um, the current space for all of the classes that are configured to go into this database, and it creates the associated tables for them. So this will create a new table within our database to store tasks. Let me just show you just so you can explicitly see what's going on here. If we're in our get it done database here, and I look at the structure, it says there are no tables in the database yet. Okay, so we'll come back over to our terminal now and run this db.createAll. And that did a bunch of stuff. We'll come back to that in a second. But now if I come back and refresh, I see that I have a new table. And if I click on that table name, notice the table name is task, which is just a lowercase version of the class task. If I click on that and look at the structure, I see that my table has two columns. One is an ID column that's a primary key. The other is a name column that is varchar with a max length of 120. So basically what happened here is SQL Alchemy created this table with, uh, with these given columns for us based on the configuration that we put in place at the top of our task class. So it's no coincidence that the max length of that varchar column is 120 because I said db.string with max length 120 here. And it's no coincidence that the, uh, the other one's an integer column with primary key equal to true or primary key um, uh, flagged on that column because I set it up to be so in the task class. Okay. Let's go back in the terminal and just look at all that, that stuff that was spit out. So this is, this is what was spit out by virtue of setting app.config SQL Alchemy echo equals true. This forces SQL Alchemy to just be really verbose about what it's doing when it's talking to the database. So in previous lessons, you've written database queries manually, you've written SQL queries manually and run those either in a web-based interface or in the PHP MyAdmin interface directly to insert, update, delete, uh, filter, join SQL data manually via SQL queries. What SQL Alchemy is doing for us is it is actually going to be smart enough to generate those SQL queries for us based on the, uh, the things that we're doing in our Python application. So you can see a lot of things here that are exact SQL, uh, SQL queries, right? So in particular, let me show you um, down here. This is probably the most interesting one of all of this. This says create table task, and it has the various columns created according to the configuration settings that we put in our Python file. So this is the SQL that was actually run against the database by SQL Alchemy based on its scan of that task class, okay? and so. Um, we're going to leave this setting on throughout our work with SQL Alchemy and um, object relational mapping in Python just because we think it gives you a clearer view into what's actually happening. I think a, a lot of the time when you go into working with applications and databases, if you just jump straight into learning about object relational mapping interfaces um, and the various libraries that can connect to a database for you, you lose sight of what those libraries are actually doing um, and how they're doing it, uh, which can actually be pretty complex. Um, and so we don't want you to lose sight of that. So having this echo on is something we'll, we'll leave on and we'll re frequently refer back to it uh, just to kind of point out the specific SQL queries that are run for us when we do specific things in our Python applications. Okay, so I've created the databases. Now let's see how we can add data to them from our Python shell. Okay, so let me make a new task just using the task constructor. Our task constructor uh, just takes a string, which is the name of the task. So I'm just going to put this task for myself. Uh, we're in the middle of lesson two. I need to finish that lesson later on. So create a new task. Okay. And now I can say db.session.add and pass it that new task. So a database session is basically a collection of queries or operations that you want to run against the database that are that will be bundled up and then run all at one time. So this will basically say, add this new object to the database session so that the next time those uh, next time we, we commit our changes to the session, this will be part of those changes. Okay, so I can add a new task there. Um, notice if I go back to PHP MyAdmin, 
and go to the Browse tab, there's still no data in the database. So just doing a session.add doesn't actually put data in the database yet. Uh, let's make another task. Okay, just another task with another name. And let me add that one to the session as well. If you don't uh, add, add the task to the session, it will not be stored in the database. Okay, so now I have two objects in my session. The way I can actually push those into the database is by saying db.session.commit. And notice when I do that, SQL Alchemy spits out a bunch of SQL. In particular, we see two inserts. We see insert into task, and then we have uh, some stuff here. And it's kind of a little bit hard to read, but basically what it's doing is it's inserting the specific values that are part of that object into that query and another insert down below. And if we come back and look at phpMyAdmin now, we see there's actual data in the database. So uh, just a couple things to reiterate there. The adds are what add an object that's already configured to be persistent to a database session. And a database session is not actually going to push data to the database right away. Uh, it'll bundle up a bunch of operations, and when we commit that session, it will then push data into the database by generating queries and running those against the database. And so we saw that those explicit queries were built um, via the, the SQL Alchemy Echo setting. Okay, now that I have data in the database, let me show you how you can get it out. And so this is, um, you know, Something we're going to look at in various forms, the different ways you can pull data out of the database you learned in previous lessons about um, different types of queries, right? Um, so joins, uh, you also learned about filtering within queries, um, different ways to, to structure selects. So um, there, correspondingly, there, there, uh, there's a wide variety of ways to pull data out of a database using Python code. We, however, um, are going to you know, learn those in turn. I just want to show you the simplest. If I want to pull things out of the task table of the database, in other words, data that represents a task object, I could say task.query.all. And this will select all of those query objects from the database. Okay, when I do that, I see that uh, I generated a select query, select task ID as task ID, task name as task name, and I actually didn't put those in anything. So let me go ahead and put those within uh, an object. Than a variable, rather. Okay, and now if I just see what's inside that variable, if I can spell properly, there we go. Um, and this isn't very pretty, but we do see that we have a list with two task objects in it. And I could be a little bit more explicit just to just to confirm to you what's going on. Say tasks bracket zero dot name, and we see that that is the first task that we put into the database, or the name of that first task at least. Okay, so. Um, just to reiterate, this is what we just did. We ran a query by using the task class. And so by virtue of extending db.model, just to make this very clear, um, when we create a persistent class and we extend db.model, we're getting a lot of things from that model class, okay? In particular, we get the ability to query instances of that class, okay? So that's where this comes from. This task.query, we didn't write a query method within our task class, we got it from extending the model class, okay? And so that query, basically that represents, it's a Python representation of a, of a MySQL query, and dot all will actually generate the query that selects all task objects from the database. So we'll work a lot more with queries using SQL Alchemy um, in future lessons, but that is the, the sort of most basic form. The next lesson, we're gonna actually take some of these things we've done in the Python shell and pull those into our application and actually have it be part of the Flask application that we're running uh, via the browser.